So here we have an optimization problem where an open top box is to be constructed from a 14 by 30 centimeter piece of cardboard. To do this, squares of equal size must be cut from the four corners so the sides can be bent upwards. What should the dimensions of the squares be to create a box with the largest possible volume? So let's take a look at our two diagrams here. Here we have the diagram of our cardboard and then the squares that we're gonna be cutting out of it. And so if you imagine, if you were to cut those squares out, you would just be left with this plus shaped piece of cardboard and then you fold it up each of these flaps along the edges, you would then have this box over here, right? And so let's label some things on our diagrams here and figure out what the dimensions are for our box. Because remember what our problem said, we wanna find the largest possible volume for this box, right? So that means that we are trying to maximize the volume. And we're going to do that by finding the dimensions of the squares that allow us to create that box with the greatest volume. And so that's really the only thing we need to label here. We know that what we're trying to find are the dimensions of these little squares that we're cutting out. And so I'm gonna label each edge of that square with X because that's going to be what we're looking for here. We wanna know the dimensions of each of these squares, which are all going to be equal, right? It says we're cutting squares of equal size from each of the four corners. And so they're all gonna be X by X. And so then we also know that this piece of cardboard is 14 by 30 centimeters. And so that means that our longer side here is going to be 30 centimeters. And our shorter side here is going to be the 14 centimeters. And so then what would be the dimensions of this box, right? Because we're going to wanna to create an equation to represent the volume of this box we need to figure out what its dimensions are. But because we're cutting out these X's, it's not as easy as saying that the dimensions are 14 by 30 because, well, for one, we don't know what the height is. And then second, we didn't take into account that we're cutting out parts of these edges. And so let's think about this. If we're cutting out a square on each side where each side of the square is equal to X, what are we going to be left with on each side after we cut out those squares? We're not gonna have 14 centimeters anymore for this edge of the cardboard, right? Because this is gonna match up with one of the edges in our box over here. And then this side right here is gonna match up with one of the other sides on our box. And so all we have to do is ask ourselves, if we start with 30 and we're removing an X from each side, what are we left with? Well, we have 30 minus X minus X. And over here we have 14 minus X minus X. And so what we have on each side is 30 minus 2x and 14 minus 2x. And so if we label that on our box over here, we'll have that one side is going to be 30 minus 2x and the other side is going to be 14 minus 2x. And so now we have two of the dimensions of our box, but we also need the height in order to find the volume. And so what would the height of the box be? How tall are these flaps going to be that we're folding in on our diagram here? Well, if we're cutting in X amount into our cardboard, then that means that the amount that we're folding up would also be X, right? This flap is going to have the same width as the square that we cut out. And so that means that our height here is X. And so then the volume of our box here would be the length times the width times the height. And so that means that our volume is going to be equal to these three quantities multiplied together. So we'll have X times 14 minus 2X times 30 minus 2X. And so now we have an equation to represent our volume. And so now this is typically the point where we go, all right, I've got my formula that we're gonna be maximizing and that we're gonna be taking the derivative of, what is my secondary equation? Or what is my constraint? But notice, that in this case, our equation is already in terms of one variable. We just have X in our equation. And so we don't even need a secondary equation. In fact, we couldn't even make one if we wanted to because we already have everything we need right here. And so we're going to want to take the derivative of this function, but this would require a triple product rule in its current state. So let's try to make this a little bit nicer by distributing this X to this quantity and then doing a little foiling. So we'll have that the volume is equal to 14x minus 2x squared, and that's gonna be multiplied by 30 minus 2x. Right, we just multiplied x into each part of this quantity. And so then if we FOIL, we'll have 14x times 30, and so that means that the volume will be equal to 420x, and then we'll have 14x times negative 2x, and so that's going to be negative 28x squared. And then negative 2x squared times 30, will give us negative 60x squared, and the negative 2x squared times negative 2x will be positive 4x cubed. And so now let's add together our like terms. We have negative 28x squared 
and negative 60 x squared. And so that's gonna be negative 88 x squared. And so if we combine those and then we rearrange our terms, so I'm gonna put them in order of the highest power, then our volume would be equal to four x cubed minus 88 x squared plus 420x. And so now we're ready to take the derivative of our volume equation. But before we do that, we need to ask ourselves what values of x are going to make sense in this situation? What is the domain for x? And this one's actually a pretty easy one. What is the largest square that you can cut out of each corner of this piece of cardboard? Well, remember that each square has to be the same size. They are going to be equal squares. And so we're not gonna be able to cut one larger on this side than this side or vice versa. And so if we look at our smallest side of 14 centimeters, we gotta think about what is the largest value of X that we could cut out. Now remember, whatever I cut out on this side, I also have to cut out on this side. And so the largest square that I could technically cut out would take me all the way to the middle, right? Because we'd be cutting out a square here and we'd be cutting out a square here. And so what that means is we'd be meeting up in the middle of our side here. So the largest possible square that we could cut out would have the dimensions of X being equal to seven, which is half of 14. So we'd be cutting out seven on this side and then we'd be cutting out seven on this side and when we do that, we wouldn't even be left with a flap over here. So technically we couldn't do that, but that would be the largest possible square that we could cut out. We couldn't cut out any more, but if we did cut out squares with an edge of seven centimeters, we wouldn't be left with flaps on these two sides to create a box. So we're not going to include that in our domain. And so for our domain, we'd have that open interval and we know that the largest we're going to pick is the number close to seven, and so then what would be our lower bound? Well, we know that we can't cut a square with negative dimensions, and so we don't need to worry about any negative values, but we could make it equal to zero, and then we wouldn't really be cutting out any squares, so that's not really possible, but any value of x greater than zero is gonna be just fine. So we'll just make zero our lower bound because we're not gonna be including zero, but we are including all the values after zero. So x can be any value between zero and seven. All right, so now that we did that, we can now take the derivative of our volume equation. And so if we do that, we'll have that V prime is equal to three times four, which is 12, and then subtract one from your exponent, you'll have X squared, and then we'll have two times 88, and so we'll have minus 176 times X, and then plus 420. And so now we have our derivative. And so now what we want to do is set it equal to zero and solve for x. And so in this case, we're going to have zero is equal to 12x squared minus 176x plus 420. And what I see here is I have a common factor of four I can pull out. Each one of these terms is going to be divisible by four. And so if we do that, we'll have that zero is equal to four times three X squared minus 44 X plus 105. And so now if we wanna solve for X in this case, we're going to have to factor this quadratic, which is a little complicated, but it's nothing we can't do. And so I'm gonna clean up my work a little bit here and then we'll work on factoring this and that will give us our final answer. All right, so I kept some of the work that I believed was important, but here is where we left off. We are going to try and factor this quadratic. And so if you go to factor this, notice that your coefficient for your x squared term is three and not one. So it's gonna be a little more complicated than usual. And so a quick way to factor this is to look at the coefficient of your first term, which would be three, and the value of your last term, 105. What you wanna do is you wanna multiply those two together. And so if you multiply three by 105, you'll get 315. And then you wanna look at the factors of 315 and see which ones when added together will get you the middle term. Now, they're going to have to be negative values, of course. So, and so you could look at all the groupings of factors for 315, but I'll save you some time and show you that 35 times nine is equal to 315 and negative 35 plus negative nine is equal to negative 44. And so we're gonna do a little factor by grouping here and we'll have that zero is equal to four times three X squared minus nine X minus 35 X plus 105, right? Negative nine plus negative 35 is negative 44. If you need some more explanation on this method of factoring, let me know in the comments and I'll be glad to help you out. But then what we can do is do a little factor by grouping by pulling three X out of these two terms and negative 35 out of these two terms. And then what we'll find is that we'll have zero equal to four times three X times X minus three minus 35 times X minus three. And so then if we pulled X minus three out of each of these terms, our factoring would be complete and we'd have that zero is equal to four times 
x minus 3 times 3x minus 35. And so that would be the complete factoring of our quadratic up here. And so now that we have finished factoring, we can set each of these quantities equal to zero and solve for x and see what the value of x for our squares that we're gonna cut out would be equal to. And so if I erase this work, we can then write that x minus three will be equal to zero and three x minus 35 is equal to zero, right? This comes from here and this comes from here. And we'll find that x is equal to three and that three x is equal to 35 if we add 35 to both sides. And if we divide both sides by three, we'll have that x is equal to 35 thirds. And that in decimal form is about 11.66. But remember, our domain is from zero to seven. So having an X value of 11 is too much. We cannot cut out 11 centimeters on both sides of this side of our cardboard piece. And so we can rule out that value of X and just be left with X equals three. That is going to be our final answer. The dimensions of our squares is going to be three by three centimeters. And so if we use those dimensions for the squares that we cut out of each corner of that piece of cardboard, we would then have maximized the volume of the box that would be created when we folded up the sides. And so that is the end of this optimization problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you found this video to be helpful and you enjoyed it, feel free to check out my channel where I have some other math related content such as lessons in calculus. But that's all I have for now. So I will see you next time.